Yes. You're on. Yo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all of you. I see the numbers rising. Uh, we're about a bit more than 20, 20 persons. Uh, I hope you had the time to uh, grab something for lunch. <laughs> we had a, quite a longer session. We're going to um, make that, that um, uh, session slightly more interactive that for the General Assembly, uh, if uh, oh, I see the numbers rising, we are now already 45 or more. Do you know, Caroline, what is the limit we can have in, uh, in, uh, as a panelist? Uh, I think it's also 500. We upgraded our Zoom account to 500 participants. Okay, okay. So let's let let's <laughs> let, I mean, <laughs> let's upgrade everybody as a panelist. I mean, the idea is to have a, a good opportunity to to chat and uh, and and know each other in terms of uh, for the one who would like to uh, actually um, engage in um, in the uh, writing, editing, or reviewing of RFCs. Um, let me uh, maybe so uh, just explain how the session will go. I will, I will start with a small introduction about the general uh, time machine agenda uh, and, uh, and the role of RFCs, explaining in big lines how it, how it works. Uh, and uh, on that basis, I suggest we have a first uh, round uh, table, a short presentation of uh, those of you who already uh, volunteers uh, to, um, to actually participate um, either as editor, reviewer, or as writers of RFCs. Uh, we'll see maybe if some of you wants, I mean, which will not participate to the webinars, would like also to present themselves. That's also possible. Just write that in the chat. If there's too many person, we may postpone that till the end. Uh, but if it's, if it's fine, we can actually add your presentation. And then once we're done with this, uh, Daniel Yeller will uh, explain you uh, how it works in practice in detail, especially making uh, going in detail on the GitHub installation uh, we have actually created for uh, writing, editing, uh, and transforming the, uh, the RFCs. Um, don't hesitate to, to switch your, your camera on, so it's nice to see all these uh, faces. You're not obliged to do it either. Awesome. But it's, uh, that's a bit the idea of these sessions. Hello to everybody. I know we are followed uh, by people from uh, you know, the United States, uh, very part of Europe. So, so it's, it's super, uh, super exciting each time I mean, to, to have these, uh, these moments. Let me share my screen. Oops. There we go. Oops, for some reason I have this button here. I like just to do, you see my who can share thing? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it like this. Oops, here we go. Okay, um, so uh, we won't go into the whole detail, but just I would like to give you to, to, to show again, I mean, the basic uh, technical infrastructure of the time machine. Uh, it's, uh, it's essentially a, a system which is uh, organized in, uh, we can potentially say, three parts. I mean, some parts which we have on the left are what we call digital content processors. Uh, they are uh, made for extracting information uh, from a various series of uh, documents, uh, ranging from uh, image, uh, photographies, uh, maps, uh, cadastres, uh, natural uh, history collections, uh, videos, uh, uh, actual architectures and um, music scores, whatever. So there's I mean, dedicated automatic or semi-automatic uh, systems in which uh, these documents are typically annotated train on that basis, and these are created partial knowledge graph, as we call them. Uh, at that point, of course, you have a series of challenges already, in a sense that one needs to agree on standards uh, on how to do these extractions uh, and how to organize, uh, and how to organize uh, things. Uh, the, these elements are put together in a big uh, buck, I mean, which we call this big data of the past. And this is where, I mean, of course, standardization is important. I mean, one of the uh, goal of the, of the time machine is agreeing on what we call the data graph. I mean, the process by which it's possible to, to still have the multilingual flexibility, uh, the actual uh, possibility of doing uh, different levels of modernization, but actually agreeing 
on a, on a model level which permits to aggregate this information in space and time. And you have various um, entities which are processing, I mean, this graph in various way. Uh, one is called the large scale inference engine. Uh, it's essentially a way of, of doing conjectures about, uh, about the data, uh, doing in some cases inferences, uh, doing uh, various, uh, various forms of, of treatment uh, in order to check on the one the coherence or, the, or detect potential incoherence and potentially uh, do some deduction or abduction on this data. So it's a form of classical artificial intelligence techniques. Uh, you have another system which is called the universal representation engine, which is doing all the things which are linked with what we can call non-conceptual content. Uh, essentially, if you have a description, uh, a textual description, how does it relate with an image? If you have various uh, description in various languages, is there an interlinguistic space where they can all meet? So it's all deal with these forms of Latin spaces, uh, and it serves as a multimodal translation system, if you want, uh, that permits to infer information uh, from image to text, from text to image, from sound to text, uh, from one language to the other, and so on and so forth. So all these things which are related to, let's say, um, elements which are non-directly conceptual and making links with conceptual elements. And then you have a third engine, which is directly linking with what we call the 4D uh, simulation engine, which is the way of making some form of reasoning uh, and processing on space and time uh, with recurring patterns, with ways of, of, of finding uh, reoccurring elements and processing and extending the data. All these, there's a form of loop, as you can see on the schema, which is taking the data which has been fed in and re-inputting data uh, which, is, which has been changed. All this needs to be tra tracked, uh, monitored. There's, of course, an issue about, about uh, the existence of potential uncoherent data, which we may call fictional spaces, I mean, various, various elements like this. And all this needs to be solved in a way or another. And in, as a third uh, view on this, you have what we call the access platform, which are different views on that particular uh, ongoing uh, process of uh, connections of data. And uh, that is linked with particular uh, usage uh, for, for some exploitation platform, for typically for tourism, uh, typically for a special uh, work on architecture, for instance, but also uh, for the academic world for research, but also for citizen usage and so on and so forth. So you have, I mean, essentially different prospecting on the same data, but with the idea that uh, the access platform are only one view on the data. Uh, not, uh, not actually changing directly uh, the integration effort of the data itself. So that's, that's a very general view. Uh, one way, I mean, of, of viewing it is viewing it from the interface point of view. This is what we've been calling, talking about mirror world, and this is part of the, of the planning we have. Uh, but, but it's potentially at that stage more interesting to, uh, um, let's say, look inside the machine as we're doing here and try to understand how we can build it. So uh, what are the process for building this? Well, that as I introduced this morning uh, during the Time Machine General Assembly, there are two uh, process. One process is um, a form of um, rapid fast track process, which is essentially built with the local time machine experimentations uh, projects are created, which deal by digging particular sources and producing data which need to be put in the data graph. And so this is uh, going on in various cities, in various contexts, uh, currently not necessarily in a, in a completely coherent way, but, but what we're trying to do is, is document all this. This project also could be dedicated uh, for building two types of, um, of assets. One thing which you call operators, which essentially are code libraries. Uh, typically some groups are, uh, are developing segmentation algorithms, uh, machine learning classification algorithms, uh, particular ontologies, all that enter and are shared as building blocks for helping other people to do projects. So that's, that's an easy case. And other projects are building actual apps, I mean, which are external interfaces, a uh, system for annotating documents, a system for presenting documents or browsing documents in a given way, and which are using, ideally, as an entry put, the data from the data graph and the 4D map. Uh, the idea is to develop locally uh, and fastly uh, some experiments which serve as concrete 
um, let's say, um, data and, and experience, uh, when we have to decide on what are the best technology and what is the best way of integrating. We try to be not theoretical on this aspect, but as much as possible ground in the actual practices. And one good news is that, I mean, this is what, what, what has been happening since the beginning of the time machine. We've been seeing that so many groups are tackling these things in parallel. I mean, there we see really uh, dozens of projects which are doing this sort of thing, but they're doing it in an uncoordinated manner. And so one of the first role of the local time machine is to document these, these elements so that they can be actually compared and um, and, uh, and use for what is interesting us today, which is the uh, collective writing of re requests for comment. Uh, so why requests for comment? It's an inspiration from the core design principle of the internet. I mean, the internet was collectively built with these small notes, which were requests for comment. So we took inspiration from this, saying that potentially the internet was extremely hard to build. So uh, building collectively and still maintaining to have a form of global coherent governance was, was, was difficult. So that gives us uh, an element of inspiration. There are many aspects which are different from the time machine requests for comments than for the internet requests for comment. I mean, the ones developed for developing the internet were kind of loose. I mean, there were possibility of writing notes in a very general way. Here, we're trying to be slightly more uh, goal-oriented in the sense that each request for comment is actually uh, offering or discussing a solution to a given problem. And this is essentially uh, what we've been uh, uh, been doing is trying to come up with the goal, different various goal, technical but also non-technical that needs to be solved for the, for doing the time machine. And uh, each time, actually, there was an issue, we were uh, coming up and writing a potential request for comment. So this is what has led to the 68 requests for comment, which are planned in the, the, the document which was sent to the European Commission and which is which are also described in the first request for comment in a minute. You're gonna see where, where you can see the most updated list uh, concerning this. Uh, each of these box corresponds to an identified problem for which we know there's a solution. And we, we've been actually with Daniel uh, trying to track the dependencies and saying okay, that, I mean, which problem needs to be solved first so that we can attack the second problem and so on and so forth. And that permits to you a, a potential plan. It's not, of course, a definitive list. There are many other problems that can be um, tackled. There may be other ways, of course, of, of uh, looking at these series of uh, problems to solve. But uh, this can, can give you an idea on uh, an inspiration of what we're trying to do. The thing we have to, to think is that this, these are not scientific papers. Uh, these are not uh, elements where we you, you have to show results. These are design proposal in the sense that you, each request for comment is starting by the motivation of a problem and then develop uh, an actual uh, suggested solution for that problem. And this is that solution which is criticized, upgraded, uh, discussed collectively until it actually uh, reach a given consensus. Uh, nothing is set on stones in the sense that it's not that things are becoming necessarily standards. They, 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 will, they will become de facto standards just by being used in some way. But it's a process by which we can actually follow what has been decided and what has not been decided and uh, upgrade progressively these definitions as, um, as we progress in time. Um, the request for comment deals with various forms of issues, framework, digitization, local time machines, data infrastructure. Uh, this, is, this is one way of organizing them, but not necessarily the only way. Um, let me just say a couple of words on how it works uh, and what are the role of the, of the, of the different uh, groups. Uh, essentially, uh, there's an editorial committee, which, which role, uh, which is not, I mean, these are not constituted yet. And this is why we are currently recruiting uh, the various profiles who would like to, to give a bit of their time to, to help us on this. What the editorial committee tries to do is organize uh, the process by which the authors are preparing the RFC draft. I mean, if, you're, if an author wants to, to actually propose, say, oh, I'm actually interested in making a proposal for one of these particular solutions, then it, instead of letting that author just writing independently, I mean, the proposal and sending it with the risks of maybe two authors have been writing things, something in parallel, or maybe that someone else was working on the thing already, the editorial committee is, is um, organizing the process, putting uh, offers in, uh, in, uh, in connections if needed, and then uh, following, I mean, how is the draft uh, actually 
um, produce. When the draft uh, reach a first stage, it, there's also a first, I would say, um, reviewing, which, which is slightly more slightly informal, done by the editorial committee, and also already, to some extent, by the by the community on the GitHub platform, to uh, try to come up with a good enough uh, proposal. And once we reach that particular let's say level of for, for, for the proposal, then there's a second review process, which is uh, with a slightly larger community using the open uh, review uh, platform. And Daniel is going to present that in detail. The point is that uh, things get public quite quickly. I mean, it's not, we want the thing to be at the same time slow. I mean, there are many process for people for doing feedback, but the first draft is shared as soon as, um, as it's ready so that people can already uh, uh, potentially, if they think it's a good solution, start to take it into account, uh, even if it's not validated uh, in, in, a, in a definitive manner. So, uh, for instance, this, we, you'll see example today with the, for instance, the RFC 5, which is describing all the functioning of the local time machine. This is a quite elaborated draft already, but it's not yet in the open review phase. I mean, still, as we are bootstrapping the, the, the process uh, in, a, in an earlier phase. Um, the point, uh, another responsibility for the editorial committee is to maintain what we call the RFC tree, which is updating uh, not only the RFC which have been written, but the RFC which are planned. It's very likely that maybe writing an RFC, you will uh, have an example of sub RFC to, to be written saying, okay, that RFC is solving that problem. But as we write, there's at least two or three sub problems which were identified and they have now a reference, they added to the tree so that people when they try to see how they can participate, they can see whether the problem they'd like to solve is already in the tree uh, or not. And if it's not, it needs to be added uh, with a discussion with the editorial committee. Um, well, that's basically the process. So a, a, a form of, of preparation with the editorial committee and then a larger review, which is done um, by the population, by the, uh, by the, um, by the larger uh, community. Uh, the, um, at any moment, it's possible to see the exact state of development of the various, uh, the various RFC uh, which are presented. Um, let me show you already uh, where you can see, I mean, the, the ongoing uh, work. Uh, it's in, on GitHub, uh, Time Machine Project Request for Comment. You see the address uh, on, the, on the line uh, on the right. And uh, on that page, you can see, for instance, for the first five RFCs, uh, this, the current situation of the different drafts, uh, how far they are, and you see that they are open drafts which are uh, at the level of, of, of ongoing discussion uh, in which people can already intervene, and some draft in preparation when you, which are in fact, you're going to see pull requests that you can inspect, but which are not yet considered by their authors uh, ready for uh, a larger um, discussion and, um, and review. Uh, let me just guide you on the first RFCs. What do they, uh, what are they? I mean, you have the first one, which is the RFCs on RFCs. So the entire process that I'm presenting here in itself is amendable. And so uh, this is a subject of the RFC zero, which is defining the general principle. But if at some point we see that some things are not quite working or we want to do it in a bit of a different manner, it's possible to change it, of course. But that will be, of course, documented. The RFC one is a, is a bit specific because it come up with all the terms which are used in all the RFC. So each time a new RFC is defining a concept like the 4D map or the 4D simulator or annotators or app, it gets actually updated in the RFC one. So it's, a, it's, an, it's an RFC which is getting updated quite, quite often. And that is also a way for helping new RFC writers to, uh, to, to converge on concepts and, and to detect potential misunderstanding. The, uh, the RFC uh, 2 uh, is uh, the one on the, um, on the, on the uh, committee, on the RFC 3, sorry. And it's, so we decided to have the RFC directly uh, de describing the, um, uh, the tree, not in a separated way and being part of the RFCs themselves, like any modification. Uh, can actually be seen on the RFC2, which is supposedly the place where you have the most updated version of the RFC3. Uh, that's, uh, that's a way of making sure that the entire content and definition of the time machine is all contained in the, in the RFCs. And you have no external information. If you read the entire RFC, you understand 
everything about the architecture. Uh, it includes also the planning, uh, which itself get modified uh, as it comes. Um, and uh, there's a couple of additional RFC on the, the platforms, uh, the, uh, the um, editorial committee, which are uh, free and full. The point really where we are now is that there was an initial group of people which are just bootstrapping the, uh, these efforts, but uh, the big key moment is, is, is organizing this free community. I mean, the, the one that's going to help the process, the RFC editors, they want to dedicate part of their time to uh, actually shaping um, the, the way the RFC system will work, helping uh, authors to actually uh, uh, prepare their draft, uh, detecting incoherence, and that sort of thing. Some person that want to contribute, so they, these people need to really dive into the RFC, into the time machine architecture and have a, try to have a global view. Uh, so they are extremely precious, of course. The RFC writers, I mean, some people say, okay, I can't maybe necessarily contribute to everything, but there's a couple of things in the RFC2 for which I'm extremely knowledgeable and I have a pretty good idea and good um, pointers where why it should be in a given way. So I'm ready to, to try and, and write the first proposal in that direction. And the RFC reviewers, which say, are saying, well, this is a topic which interests me. I'm ne not necessarily have neither time nor, nor, nor to do editors or writers, but I'm happy to review on the basis of my understanding of the state of the art and the various solutions. So there's a way, uh, if you're interested in one of these, please write to RFC at timemachine.eu. There's also uh, on the website, uh, that's true, Daniel, I think a, a form in which you, when you click, you can actually uh, directly uh, click to, uh, to join uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, have a possibility to, um, uh, to, uh, to join us. Um, so um, are there immediate questions before we are uh, doing a first round of presentation of some of you. And after we will do the presentation of the RFC process by then, are there initial questions? No questions. Okay, so so maybe I suggest we, so so as we I explained, we, we did a first webinar where we presented some of these elements and some of you uh, participated and said they wanted actually to, to, to join us. And so we asked them to, to, to present themselves uh, uh, today, maybe saying a couple of us who, who they are and what are the parts of the, of the, uh, of the challenge they would like to, um, to tackle. Uh, let me just excuse the Simon Rayner uh, he's the uh, technical director of Pelagios. He wanted to participate, but he cannot be uh, with us today, but he wants to get involved. And so we will uh, st uh, start by uh, Konstantinos Kotis. Are you with us, Konstantinos? Yeah, you are. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so let me first uh, also share my screen. And... Uh, and... Uh, right, so... Um, thank you again uh, for um, this invitation. I'm glad uh, that uh, uh, I joined you again since last uh, year in Dresden. Um, as, as you said, uh, I'm Konstantinos. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Cultural Technology and Communication of the University of the Aegean uh, in Greece. Um, and uh, I'm a member of the Intelligence Systems Lab. Um, leading the Semantic Web and IoT Research Group. Uh, our research is organized, as you can see, in four research groups um, in 3D visualization, computational intelligence, um, uh, intelligent interaction, and Semantic mm -hmm. Web and IoT, and applied mainly in the domains of cultural informatics and digital culture. So I'm this guy on the right of your screen. And um, uh, our lab uh, is uh, working um, on several R&D projects uh, related to cultural heritage and, uh, of course, to, to Time Machine. And uh, selectively, I would like to mention um, uh, a, a couple of them. Uh, so there are two, two indirect projects, DigiArc and Recalt, for the preservation and uh, promotion and dissemination of medieval and religious culture, um, where we're implementing digitization and 3D modeling tasks. Um, there is a national uh, funded project where we are developing an ubiquitous uh, platform for cultural routes and touring experiences. 
um, and uh, a, a national funded, uh, nationally funded scholarship um, uh, where we develop algorithms for um, uh, automatically enhancing uh, color perception in digitized, digitized art paintings. And that uh, we do that for people with, that are suffering from uh, color vision deficiencies. So uh, specifically uh, uh, for my group, the group that, uh, uh, as I said, I, I'm, I'm leading, the expertise related to time machine can be outlined uh, in three research areas and topics. The first one is knowledge representation. The second one is linked data uh, modeling. Uh, and the third one is knowledge management and ontology engineering with a focus to semantic data management and uh, um, to, to ontology based data access to integration and reasoning, ontology engineering methodologies and tools and knowledge, man knowledge graph management. So uh, a representative list of current R&D uh, work of my group related to time machine uh, could be the, this one. So we have um, first a conversational AI uh, for cultural heritage and museums in the era of knowledge graphs, um, generating and exploiting semantically enriched integrated linked and open cultural data, semantic trajectories modeling analysis and, and uh, uh, recommended systems for smart culture spaces, and finally uh, digitizing and documenting uh, semantically annotating and publishing content in the semantic web. So regarding my labs and groups past and future contribution to Time Machine, I just would like to, to mention uh, um, and, and, and uh, to remind you that uh, we have contributed to fact sheets for uh, um, artificial general intelligence uh, as an author uh, um, and uh, data knowledge modeling uh, uh, with um, uh, reviewing comments. And we have uh, presenting a, um, at lightning session on uh, local time machines in Dresden. And we have been acting as uh, regular members of time machine organization for two years now. And of course, uh, we hope that we will um, be able to contribute um, uh, again as authors or and reviewers to time machine RFCs, uh, especially focusing on the data graph RFC. So we have already some uh, expertise with uh, um, already some experience with a number of related uh, um, to time machine knowledge graph technologies, such as uh, the EDM, CDOC, CRM, time and location ontologies, graph stores and platforms, uh, spatiotemporal RDF stores, uh, RDF query languages, and virtual RDF graphs. So finally, I, I would like to add that uh, uh, we are uh, following related research uh, events and publications, uh, such uh, as uh, the recent one, uh, um, the recent workshop on computing techniques uh, for spatiotemporal data in archaeology, archaeology and cultural heritage, uh, with a number of related research topics, um, topics that we would base our work uh, on the time machine knowledge graph. Um, so such work focuses uh, on, uh, on cultural, um, uh, on challenges in spatiotemporal uh, modeling of cultural heritage information, reusing uh, existing models and technologies um, such as uh, CDOC CRM, CRM uh, Geo, GeoSparkle, uh, uh, OwlTime and, and, and others. So uh, that, that's uh, uh, from me. Uh, any questions, if you like, or at the end, I, do, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Cotis. I think, I think indeed, I mean, your your contribution would be much, much, okay, thanks, uh, much appreciated. Uh, indeed, I mean, part of the challenge in uh, in the data graph is to uh, reuse a part of the very good ideas. I mean, there are many of these ontologies. I mean, especially the event centric idea of CDOC CRM, uh, the way uh, the time ontologies. I mean, have been uh, have been actually quite solving, I mean, most of the hard challenge there is in, in, in mm -hmm. this modelization. So, so there's a couple of points uh, specific. So I will, will, will then dedicate probably, once we'll, I mean, that the key idea is that when we get a better understanding about the distribution of people, then, then we will create subgroups, of course, and, uh, and try to see uh, whether first informally, uh, whether people are more or less agreeing on the directions. And if it's, uh, and if it's clear, then, then creating the right groups. But I mean, your expertise is, is much needed. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. Uh, moving to uh, Maria Ozuna um, Alachon. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for your invitation. 
Um, I would like to share my pantalla here. Okay. Well, <laughs> I can't do that. Oops, it's not, it's not working. Is it okay, uh, no problem. I can I can tell you. Well, I am permanent lecturer at the university in Salamanca in Spain. I I focus in especially in digital use and reuse of cultural heritage, especially uh, about documental heritage. I'm working in uh, this design um, uh, a repository of patrimony. And this is my project in this moment. And I focus in reuse this um, repository for uh, small and medium collections and uh, work in open access metadata and um, uh, work in the diffusion uh, as much as possible uh, for this kind of little collections that need uh, support and um, fin fi finance and budgets. And well, this is my project in this moment, uh, financial for about uh, Minister of, of Spain. Um, I, I have a little project uh, and I'm working uh, with a group of people in this. Um, I collaborate also in the program of UNESCO, Memory of the War. I, I, I met, invited a couple of, of uh, times for share this kind of uh, repository. Um, uh, well, if you have, um, um, well, my specialty in the in the university is rare books, uh, analysis, document, documental analysis, and uh, the treatment of, of documentation in general, working with metadata, um, share the repository for uh, small and little collections and that we can uh, replicate if if, if you need in your collections. Um, if you have any question, I'm happy to collaborate with Time Machine. Um, if you think that I can be used in, well, in any part, you can tell me. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Maria. Um, so, so do you think you, you would like more to, to act as a more an editor, a writer or, or a reviewer? We don't know yet. Um, probably a uh, writer, <laughs> probably a review, probably editor. Mm, okay, you're, you you're also, there, there's a series of, of, of requests for comments concerning the actual best practices one needs to do in the digitization processes and the and the description of the of the data on the on the first element. So that maybe is. I mean, we we can talk with that later. Okay. But but, okay. but 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 yeah, I'm trying to match each profile with uh, with the best contribution. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you very much, Frederick. Moving to to Jim, and we're so sorry, Jim, that, that you're in the middle of the night uh, in Colorado, and you've been staying awake uh, also for the general assembly. It's it's a great honor to 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 to, to have you uh, following us from the U.S. Um, the floor is yours. Yes, yeah, so. Thank you very much uh, to the committee for inviting me. I uh, have a few words here and let me get my screen shared. I'm a 69 year old independent citizen scientist who together with my wife and research partner, Tim Babisky, live in Broomfield, Colorado. And we're both cancer survivors and having uh, the good fortune to survive, we decided we wanted to do something to pay it forward in terms of the bonus rounds um, that we're experiencing. And we didn't know it at the time. But we were starting on a path to become citizen scientists. And the first thing that we wanted to do 
was to preserve the 48 issues of Soft Talk magazine, which were a unique and comprehensive chronology of the early days of the microcomputer and digital revolution. They were published between 1980 and 84. And even though that's only a few decades ago, it's hard to remember that before the internet, magazines were our websites. They, they were published weekly or monthly, just like a website would be updated you know, 24 seven. But the kind of information that was gotten uh, was through magazines and newspapers. So after my cancer battle, one of the things that we surfaced were a couple of boxes of the magazine. And we decided that for our 25th uh, wedding anniversary, we were gonna fund the digitization of the magazine into the Internet Archive. And this is what started us uh, learning about uh, cultural heritage, preservation, digitization, and whatnot. And having spent uh, the bulk of my uh, career as a soft talk, a small, uh, small talk, uh, soft talk uh, software designer and developer, I came up with ideas uh, that I eventually learned uh, um, would be considered ground truth storage formats for serial publications, where what we wanted to do was to develop a, a, a completely uh, fact cloud uh, a version of the magazine that would be based on uh, an integrated complex document structure and content depiction and time series model based on uh, an ontological stack of Sidoc CRM, FRBR, and Press OO international standards. And so as we did that, um, we, we got involved in the uh, muse museum computer network. And as I developed a personal learning network, primarily of, of good folks in the EU and the UK, we got involved in the uh, Daytech program and had a couple of our uh, papers uh, accepted for posters in the 2017 and 19 uh, conferences. And what we found is as we got more and more involved into the research community that we became early adopters and advocates for the rise of independent citizen scientists. These are uh, potential uh, researchers and scholars in the community who are unfunded and have non-traditional uh, training and non-traditional uh, and, and not affiliated with uh, the organizations that we normally think of in terms of these uh, research and scholarly communities. One of the things that we found early on is that we became very familiar with, we, we, we saw the Venice time machine and how it uh, evolved into the, the time machine. And, and we said, geez, this is, we recognize this as the digital humanities and cultural heritage moonshot of the 21st century. And so we wanted to become part of it. And, uh, and, and so we've, we've been uh, active um, involved in, in uh, watching the, and contributing to the growth of the vision for the Time Machine Project. And so as we heard about the RFC process before uh, the documents were made available, we reached out to the uh, committee, uh, editorial committee, and put forth a couple of ideas for RFCs that we thought we might uh, contribute to the effort. One was focused on uh, our specific research, which is the formation of a ground truth standards tools and data sets working group. And the second was the one that we found, uh, we, we wrote a, an informal uh, uh, roadmap for citizen scientist participation in the time machine project. And this is before we knew what uh, was contained in the uh, massive uh, RFC tree. And as we looked at the RFC tree, we realized that we probably don't need uh, a separate RFC for the roadmap for citizen scientists participation. And in fact, we can look for collaborators and partners who wanna work with us on, on some of those ideas. And so what I wanted to do was um, focus just a couple minutes on this idea of a, a 
a working group for the ground truth standards tools and data sets. In reply to that entree of uh, my volunteering to, uh, to form such a, a group, I heard back from the editorial committee and they invited me uh, to look at the, re the reference tree and make some comments here today. And so as I looked at, at that RFC, uh, the RFC 2, 68 incredibly, uh, it, I mean, what a massive multi-year exciting uh, agenda is described in, in RFC 2. But what I saw was that this was fundamentally um, a, a collection of uh, silos of, of what and how, of work process and, and work product and process over many years. And, and so I, I was taken uh, you know, to the task of saying, well, where, where would such a ground truth standards tools and data sets working group fit in? Uh, to this RFC tree. And I was reminded that one of the things when, when I spent so many years in uh, software design and development, there's a, a, a metaphor that we often use in terms of talking about managing software projects, where we talk about herding cats. Um, talented people with incredible skills, but in the course of a large software development project, it, it is often the case where you have small groups of very specific talented people and you say, we're gonna need Sam during these months and weeks and is that person gonna be available and whatnot. So I was looking at the RFC tree with this idea of, of how would we herd the cats of people who are interested in the ground truth uh, working group. And as I looked at it, I realized that as I read through, I would be like, oh, there, it fits in here. And then I'd read a little further, no, it goes in here. Maybe it better fit there. So uh, it became clear to me that, that when we think about the, the groups of people who would be uh, involved in the writing, editing, and uh, review of the RFCs, that, that we potentially had the need uh, for uh, a, a, a recognition for these uh, groups of, of folks who will be uh, part of the, the ongoing process over the next few years. And so I would like um, to make my final comment here be that, that I see an opportunity where we could expand the definition of RFC4 from the RFC uh, for the editorial committee to be uh, the RFC on editorial committee and working groups. And I would append a paragraph, something to the extent of RFC working groups or self-organizing networks of researchers and scholars sharing an interest and expertise relevant to the mission and values of the Time Machine Project that transcend affiliation with a single specific RFC. Such groups are anticipated to serve as persistent and efficient human resource pools for the authoring and review of the RFCs envisioned within the RFC tree. This RFC will define the chartering process and best practices for the creation and contribution of such groups. So with that, I wanna thank again, the editorial committee, uh, Frederick, uh, uh, Kevin and, and Daniel, uh, for inviting me to make uh, these comments. Uh, I've, uh, if anybody would like to take a deeper dive into the ideas that, uh, that we're working on in terms of our Ground Truth uh, storage format magazine, GTS research, I did a manifesto article in 2015 uh, that helped launch my personal learning network. Um, and these slides I have posted on uh, uh, research gate and I'll put in the chat a link to that and uh, Tim and I uh, just again thank everybody for uh, allowing us to be part of this amazing project and we welcome collaboration and interest uh, of folks so thank you again and this is a fantastic project.
Thanks, thanks to Tim Lin and you. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's especially, thanks especially to go immediately. I mean, I think in the, in the question of the edition, and I think we had in the, the core of the, of really the discussion we want to have, uh, to, to come back maybe a second on, on what you suggested. Uh, it's true that I think the ground truth aspect is something which was a bit overlooked, I mean, in the current RFC3. And so, uh, so there's two approach. I mean, either, as you say, I mean, it's, it's something a bit transversal. And so, so we need maybe a working group to think about it, or we may actually, I mean, without, we may create an RFC on this, uh, really. I mean, the group having to, to produce this because uh, there's obviously different aspect of it. I mean, we need the ground truth for training uh, systems uh, at mm. quite quite immediately at the level of local time machines. People, this is some of the aspect of, of exchanges which are which are happening quite early on in the in the training process. So that that is uh, that is highly valuable. And, but we need also change a bit. It's it's let's say it's content or it's. Uh, it's uh, it's nature when we're dealing with comparing, let's say, the various extraction uh, and test their coherence regarding uh, other types of ground truth. And so, so that's super interesting, and that's typically the type of discussion we like to have and uh, and progress. So, so, so we're not going to decide whether we're going to do working groups or not. But thanks a lot, and we're going to bring you to the conversation because I think this is typically in that type of um, final look. Uh, we would like. Uh, I like, uh, and, and on the other point, I think also the question of citizen scientists is overlooked now in the RFC tree. I think it's a natural aspect because we have, uh, it's, it's made by academia, then you have a couple of companies, but, but, but taking absolutely seriously the, the, the capabilities of citizens to uh, transform the time machine in what way is, is a hard topic. Uh, in the General Assembly presentation, I, I said really the time machine was going to be made by citizens for citizens. So it's absolutely key to, to manage uh, to successfully pass I mean, this, this step. Uh, and so the goal of the RFC is to transform that, that need of that. I mean, how do we have? citizen scientists uh, involved, uh, but coming up with concrete proposal uh, on which uh, we have idea on how to structure these communities, identify the typologies of citizen scientists, uh, bring them on, on the platform in the right way. Uh, so, so these are two very important topics, which I think deserve, uh, deserve a lot of attention. And uh, I suggest we continue working on that together in, uh, in the, uh, yeah, in, uh, maybe, maybe at, be at better time, uh, not in the middle of the night, <laughs> or yeah. may maybe slightly more synchronized or, or, or later in the afternoon for. For us. Thanks a lot, Jim. They're very precious. Uh, very and uh, thanks for your commitment and uh, and and uh, careful look. Uh, okay. we, we are continuing our our movement, our tour of of uh, the, our initial set of volunteer with Jochen Bucher. Are you with us? Ah. Jochen, not sure. Okay, maybe. Oops, no. Okay, no, no, no worry. Uh, have I forgotten some, some, somebody among the one who initially uh, were candidates for, for joining after the first webinars? No. Uh, are they in the in the audience before we go in and dive in slightly more detail about how it works in practice? Some people that are so motivated they would like to actually and they think they can contribute either as editors or, or writers or, or, or as reviewers and would like to say a couple of words of presentation. Don't feel shy. I mean that's the occasion of uh, I mean we, we're more than 68 now in the in the webinar. So anybody? Shall I just uh, share my enthusiasm for collaborating on the citizen science involvement RFC? I gladly uh, act as the right co-author uh, of that. Excellent. That's that's what we want. We want like cohort. I mean, we want situation where people are fighting to to actually join and write together. That's exactly the spirit. Thanks, thanks, Julia. Anybody else? Don't feel shy. Okay, uh, you, you will have all the, okay, yeah. I, I put uh, Francesco Beretta, I put, uh, shall I speak just or? Yeah, go, go ahead. If you can switch your camera, that's easier okay. because, but. Uh, oh yes, sorry, because. Hello I'm Francesco. Yeah. <laughs> hi, hi. And I can try to share my screen, just one second. It's about uh, semantic technologies. I would like also to participate in the same uh, 
but from another perspective in the same uh, uh, group or uh, RFC as Konstantinos mm -hmm. Gotis, what he presented. But from another point of view, I try to quickly share my, my, uh, let's see if it works. Yes. Now, we had also a poster last year in the Time Machine Conference that you can find about this workflow. Because as we know, uh, I'm speaking until uh, the screenshot, the screen is coming. So the idea is uh, projects produce data in different formats or have available data. And uh, of course, we know semantic technologies allow to, um, to share this data <clears throat> with the correspondent uh, models. But um, what we tr to try to work on in LARA, which is a French uh, CNRS lab, is to participate in developing a high level conceptualization of social life. <clears throat> so the one first point I would like to mention is that we are participating as editors in the development of an extension of CEDOC CRM for social phenomena. This is then very high level because the vision is, of course, I. Now, and I had my screen that I have to hide the slides, just sorry for the inconvenience, find the slides which are here. These are the slides, of course, for something else, but normally it should also work here. Okay. So the basic idea is to extend the, CR the CRM and the use for this ontomy, uh, which is an application online that already presented a couple of times in the Time Machine conference and workshops before and so on where you can, on the one side, add new classes if you want to have them, or you can just take them if they exist and produce uh, profiles that you can use. So just to shortly mention this, the CRM are the white classes. And if you want to have really conceptualization, which can be a kind of way of merging all existing data, of course, every project and every subdomain has a specific vision. We must respect this, and this is very uh, diverse. But we have uh, we need some kind of level of abstraction so that reasoning, also in the sense of uh, semantic technologies, can work. And and therefore, you need to have a more high level abstraction. So this is the kind of work we are trying to do, and also conceptualizing in relation to social sciences. The high level classes which are missing in CDOC CRM, because of course CDOC CRM is thought for modeling uh, cultural heritage and museum data, and we need in social sciences some additional classes. So we would like to contribute. Uh, you can later on in another context tell us where you think we could uh, help in, diff in different levels. Here we try, as we know, ontologies are shared conceptualizations, formalized but shared, which means. We need communities adopting them so that they become standards. Otherwise, the, these are local dialects. And that's it's what we are trying. And I think for Time Machine, that can also be useful. And my last point would be, uh, we can have this kind of perspective that we have high level ontologies and their extensions, not just CRM, but even other ones yeah, like Dolce or other ontologies, which are foundational then we can have projects ontologies and data, of course, in the projects. And we have to manage this uh, hierarchy in standardized forms with the technologies that our colleagues like Konstantinos uh, develop so that we can then have reasoning on all the data. This is one of the components we could have in the time machine that the human being can and the semantic engineering expert can combine a little bit things. So then the reasoners can then take more advantage, yes, because you can have the not supervised uh, alignment of graphs or the, or the supervised or at least enriched through uh, this kind of technology. So we would be happy to participate at the level that we can discuss in another context uh, in this sense and bring our knowledge or our competencies there. Thanks a lot, Francesco. I think it's, it's, it's exactly, I mean, the type of uh, of, of discussion we're going to have on the data graph. I mean, really, I mean, first on the level of a kind of state of, of the art, understanding which domain we considered as, as being sufficiently well covered by the existing ontologies. I mean, 
actually some, some aspects which are extremely well covered by by uh, CDOC uh, CRM or let's say core version, uh, which which I would say extension of CDOC CRM are currently the most uh, efficient, the most fruitful for practical reason or uh, theoretical reason, um, question about places which can be extended. So, so we're gonna go, I would say, in the, in the, in the list of, of the modeling. And then on that basis, once I think the, because I think in all these ontology, you have the design principle and there are key ideas which were brought by several researchers at some moment. And then there are the implementations, uh, easiness, uh, facilities of linking with various um, inference, uh, systems, uh, which can be also discussed separately in some case, uh, but these are, these are large communities. So this is what we will have to, uh, to solve in some way and, uh, and uh, trying based on an analysis coming up with, uh, with recommendation we believe are, I mean, which will try to be consensual, but will be argued uh, on, the, on, on this basis. So, I'm, but I'm extremely confident because I think we have, I mean, in that community indeed, uh, both, I mean, the, the, the the, the people who knows about the, the, the core the core ontology and the, the people who have been experimenting with uh, with their limitations and have been extending them in, in other in other aspects so so that's um, that's excellent so yeah we're going we, I think that is going to be one of the next uh, chantier for uh, 2021 and the data graph is one of the most uh, expected of course uh elements and we need to find a way to progressively strengthen it and and uh, and manage to to succeed where part of the community have not been so successful so far uh, in bringing a very powerful uh, ontology in practice uh with I mean, at, with, with a rate of adoption which is uh, yeah which is which is satisfactory excellent merci uh francesco any other person Okay, if, uh, let's, uh, let's, I think, go man now in slightly more detail and I and hand it over to Danielle. I mean, if in the meantime, uh, uh, you're, you're feeling... Uh, Sorry, <laughs> Fabio, Fabio raised his hand, maybe. Uh, Fabio, okay, oh, you're still with us, Fabio. Okay, uh, Fabio, yeah, go ahead. Just to tell you that uh, I'm also open to collaboration, as I told you uh, in person, uh, also on the data um category and uh, of course uh, i have uh, specific ideas uh, that uh, is in many ways uh, complementary and uh, compatible with francesco's and uh, and uh, the, the greek uh, person i don't remember Cotis, sorry, Cotis. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Cotis. Excellent. okay excellent fabio yeah uh, one aspect, I think, also, which I mean, uh, in, in your specialty, Fabio, is, is that one of the aspects is the modeling, and we have some people which are uh, much more in the inference and the type of inference and the and the and the chaining and the deductions, and I think you can contribute also on this, Fabio, and the, because yes, we may have at some point a split. I mean, they are linked, of course, because the ontology needs to be support. I mean, the the inference system, but 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 and they need to be fought together. But these are. Uh, two aspects. At some point, there will be, uh, I expect, a, a subdivision. So, so I think we have ways also of dividing the work into this. Excellent. So, so we'll regroup all the data graph people, as they call them, uh, for the moment at uh, at the later stage uh, to see how to how to rapidly proceed on, on that action. Excellent. Thanks. Any other persons? Okay. So let's move to uh, the to Danielle. I uh, give you the floor for explaining now in practice the different steps for the production of RFCs, uh, how people can also start uh, giving feedback as uh, Jim has done it uh, in, uh, in understanding the current structures, improving it so that, uh, so that we, we, we test also the process. Daniel? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, already, thanks for all the con contributors for now. Um, yeah. So what we are doing for the for the next few minutes or, or half an hour i don't know um, is i would like to show you now that we have gotten already into detail of of, of the different facets of the, the time machine um, request for comments tree more or less um, i would like to step uh, a step back uh, and give you a little bit of an overlook about how you will actually be able to to contribute to the different facets of the system um, so if anybody of you is prepared to work on a more detailed level, because we not only need persons um, contributing ideas and writing stuff, but also in managing the whole process, 
interacting with the community, interacting with the code of the actual RFC sensor. So I'm going to just show you a little bit about how the system works, the different facets. Maybe we can even find the time to, to implement the feedback um, from Jim um, to um, RFC, what was it, RFC 2. Um, and yeah, then let's, let's, let's have a look. Uh, please apologize, uh, excuse my, my switching different screen sharing things and so on, because um, yeah, I will, will try to do as much uh, in the real system as possible. And um, you always have to switch uh, the screen that you're sharing and so on. So at first, um, I want to show you a small presentation and tell you a little bit about the, um, yeah, about the, the system from an uh, from, uh, architectural point of view. So um, as Frederick already said, um, we, are, we were trying to, to build a system that basically gives everybody the possibility to contribute on different levels. And at the same time, um, is not only a textual representation of, of what we are trying to build, but is actually, as, as we, we, we said uh, in several aspects, is more or less like the, 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 the code of, of law of the, of the time machine, the source code of the, of the brain <laughs> of the time machine, if you will. Um, that means we need uh, not only the final, final documents, we need to have the history of the documents as well, who contributed to what, um, who suggested which changes to be transparent, to be um, able to, to really show who worked on what, what area. So we were thinking to build a system that, that enables this kind of interaction and at the same time is not too far removed from the other parts of the system that we will build. And that will be, of course, um, mainly source code of the different parts of the system, source code of the apps, source code of the operators, and so on. So we were thinking to build the RFC system basically as, as near to the source code as possible. So what we, what we did was, um, we imagined it as separate into different aspects. Um, the first was um, the basic um, preparation of, of what we will be able to, to write so that the first the idea stage, if you will, um, where authors um, come up with um, specific drafts of the documents that they, they are interested in, like um, um, the, the details of the data graph. But, um, they can, can, can comment and, and communicate with, with the RFC team on a more informal level. Um, then as soon as this, this participating patient, who will participate, who will write, um, who will come up with the first draft and so on, as soon as that fi is fixed, the, the drafts of these documents are integrated in our RFC repository. At this stage, it already becomes a bit more formal in the sense that um, you have to follow um, the, the, the workflow that we established in our infrastructure. Um, we have different phases where the public and the, the people interested in the specific um, RFCs can contribute, can comment. Um, and then um, we move on to, on to an even more formal phase that's um, similar to scientific publications in, in peer-reviewed magazines and um, um, scientific journals. Um, we called it the review phase, uh, where we give also people without the, the necessary background to contribute to the technical um, platform like on GitHub, the possibility to, to read the, the drafts, to comment on them, and also to, to apply formal, uh, a formal review process. Um, and after that, um, if there is um, no um, additional um, amendment to the document required, we create a formal publication in the source of, uh, uh, in, in the form of a, of a published paper for each RFCs probably on Synodo, but that's something that we didn't decide yet. So the first step, apart from coming up with an RFC idea, um, will be to contribute the, the first RFC document in a technical form 
to our repository of GitHub and then um, being able to, to interact with people who might be interested in contributing stuff um, also on this platform. That means, um, to come back here, the RFCs um, as individual documents will be written in a specific language called Markdown. That's a very low level way to, to write um, textual documents with at least um, some semantic structures. These documents are then written in our um, repository where changes will be able to be tracked, um, contributions will be able to attribute it to persons and so on. Each of these RFCs will have their fixed um, identifier, their fixed um, layout and format um, that is the same for all of them. So each document can be processed by an automated system that creates PDF documents from these uh, markdown documents in an automated way. So in the end, we get um, different steps, some of them automatic, some of them manually, where these, these documents will move through a whole um, um, chain of, of steps from the markdown basic documents to final published um, PDF papers that are able to be um, cited, are able to be reused in other contexts. Of course, they are they will be presented on a platform like the Time Machine website where we will get people more easy access to the separate parts of the infrastructure. And of course, they are um, used as the, the actual building blocks where we try to build the actual systems after in the second step. So yeah, okay. That's basically the workflow idea, then GitHub, um, then um, openreader.net, and then publication. So I guess the most interesting part will be, uh, I will just, just show you how it, how it looks in, in, in reality. So I will show you the GitHub repository. So at first, um, if you want, um, if anybody already has some, some questions about um, this high level process about what actually, what we want to try to achieve and so on, um, feel free to, to, to comment on right now if you want. So um, I'm not sure how it works. Just just raise your hand or something like that. <laughs> and I hope Caroline can, can notify me or I see it myself. Um, but I guess we can just move on. So hopefully you should already see my my um, browser screen um, with with um, GitHub. Basically, that's um, the infrastructure that that we have chosen to use. Um, for all of you not familiar with the, the thing, Git is so GitHub is a is an online platform that adds some sort of a social um, networking aspect to a technical source code um, versioning system. The actual system is called Git. Um, it's used mainly by um, soft software projects, but nowadays it's also used by all other sorts of, of projects, teams that want to track different versions and different contributions um, to their code. And it's, um, more or less the, the biggest um, platform currently for that sort of thing. And because we wanted to uh, give um, the most, uh, the, the biggest amount of people an easy way to contribute to that kind of thing, and many people are already familiar with that, we thought it would be a good idea to choose this specific platform over the, the different other competitors. Um, and we will see how that turns out. Um, basically, what you will see if you if you visit our our, our um, repository, it's this this little box where you see files and source folders. That's basically the content of our repository. Um, you see a short um, visual representation of the README file where we have some information about the things that are currently going on. Um, you can see immediately if you would like to do that um, the history of this 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 repository here. You can see um, aha, okay, on 
uh, 23rd October, I made some, some changes to the repository. Um, there are different versions of the, the whole um, code. Uh, don't worry if it's, if it's too complicated in detail, we will prepare um, additional documentation as soon as the, the basic process is, is, is finished. Um, but of course, creating documentation is um, a time consuming process and we wanted to do it when we are more or less certain that um, the whole thing is, is working as we intended it. Um, so regarding the actual request for comments, here it, as we have already heard today, that um, we have this RFC tree that, that um, specifies different RFCs that have different identifiers. So here you see RFC 0, RFC 1, 2, 3. These are the ones that we already um, created draft versions that are able, uh, that, that are open to, to, um, um, to uh, contributions, to discussions, to comments. That's the word that, that, was, that I was looking for. Um, because um, we already finished what we think uh, is, is a good first draft of the document. And we have two other RFCs that are in a more rough state um, that the initial authors um, are not yet completely finished, but they are also already um, accessible here. So if you are interested, for instance, in, in the contents of RFC 3, um, you can just just either click here on the link that we created, or you can just go directly into the, in the repository into the file section, and that's really just like like a, a folder um, hierarchy on your browser or on your on your file system. And you see here that's the actual document. It's called uh, RFC three, and it has some accompanying images. And if you open it up in on GitHub. GitHub will already try to render this markdown document in a, in a more, more readable fashion. Um, you can see it's, it's something made up of, of different parts of the document. Um, you can add diagrams, um, headlines, um, footnotes, and so on. So what it actually looks like is basically like a text document in, in a certain structure. And with the, 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 this, this, this uh, repository source code versioning system, the history of this document um, is completely tracked from the initial point of it entering our system. So you see the first uh, upload that we did was on, on July um, 8th, and there, were, there have been some small changes during the course of the run. But this first, document was something that, that got created, of course, on the local computer. But you will see that, that these, these changes are something that where you can see, OK, in this, this specific instance, um, the first this line, um, there I, I removed some, some, um, you know, some parts and added some other parts. So yeah, basically, it's a transparent history of, of the, the, whole, well, the whole RFC tree. So to have a look at this, this RFC tree where we, we were uh, working before. So here we see it's also the same kind of text document, um, basically in a, in a specific tabular form. Um, and the, the interesting thing is because of this structured um, mark a version of this document, we can also use these documents in other forms. So we can create a um, graphical representation of the RFC tree um, to be used on the Time Machine website and so on. So all these documents are already in that stage completely usable and visible. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how does it work um, actually commenting on, on that thing. So we have two different kinds of, of feedback possibilities in here. The first is as long as we have uh, documents open to, to, to draft um, 
anybody can can just have a look at their actual files and if they see something that they, they want to be amended, um, they could just um, suggest the change um, to the document. Um, that means it's something that the, the concept of that in, in GitHub is called issue. So in regard to, for instance, the RFC um, three, somebody um, like, or you know, anybody could, could just um, create a, an issue like that where they just enter a comment like, um, Sorry about the, the crude <laughs> uh, headline. So you basically can um, can um, enter here whatever you would like us to 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 be shown. Sorry. Ah yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Julia. It's I cannot think about same things at the same time. Yeah. Really, that's just um, briefly. So. At that, at that point, um, it would be visible to anybody, and you could enter sections or a copy of the of the of the actual source code, so we know what you are talking about. Um, the persons um, working in the system then have the possibility to add um, more information about it, um, so it, it's possible to more easily um, find different uh, information about that and. Anybody who sees that, yeah, is is possible. Also, has the possibility to comment on that, um, to and uh, to, to get a com uh, communication and uh, and the chat about the different problems or different facets that they would like to have amended and and changed um, possible. Of course, that's um, possible about all the different aspects. And the second thing is, it's also possible to actually not only comment on, on things, but to, to actively um, suggest a, a change to, to certain aspects of, of, you know, not certain to all aspects of the, the document. I will, if you want, I will. Just, just show you how that, that works. Um, but for that, I have to, um, yeah, to, to, to share my, my screen again with some, some other program. <laughs> okay, so now you see that that's, um, hopefully you can at least see it a little bit. That's a, a, a copy, more or less, of this repository that I have on my own computer. Um, and I can just um, um, yeah, I can just sorry. <laughs> um, let's just uh, open up the, the RFC 3 and um, suggest a change in, in the first introduction section. Um, so what I'm doing is, is um, creating this, this, this document and just um, um, oh no, let's, sorry, I forgot um, that I, I will have to enter some passwords um, <laughs> at the later stage, so that's, that's um, live. 
So I can Okay, now I have, I have a problem with my, my computer setup. So I'll just do it in the browser, sorry. Yeah, the, po the, the, the point, Daniel, so, so, it just, yeah, just, sorry. so if you have a so if you have just a comment, you put it on a comment, that's easy. You can do it on the, directly on the, on the website. If you want to change something, a typo, a full paragraph, uh, then that's something you can do either on the browser, either in a hardcore manner like Daniel, if you, <laughs> if you, if you live in a, in, a, in a black and white world like this, or there's actually slightly more user-friendly tools uh, if you if you want to do it directly from your computer, just changing as you would do it, I mean, in a, in a normal uh, Dropbox or or even Google Docs element, you just change it and you resubmit, I mean, the, the change which are, which are made there. Uh, the nice thing, of course, is that, that the thing I think which is important to understand is that once this request is, is suggested, it's not that it's all immediately uh, updated. There is, in fact, uh, the decision to accept or not accept that, that pull request. That's I think which is important. Yeah. Let me just, just uh, do again um, in a better <laughs> way. So, um, I can open it also in in, um, in GitHub where I just just um, edit. I can can edit the file directly. I should have done that in, in already. <laughs> so I just I just now made a change in my own copy of this repository and. Um, With that, um, I, I can create something that's called a pull request with these changes. And that's something that anybody um, wanting to contribute in, in the repository, uh, in the, the chain, the source code and so on can do as exactly as I did now in um, uh, a few minutes. So in the section on the, the, the official RFC repository, there is a section, it's called pull requests, where these kind of changes are, are visible. And here, this, uh, this update RFC 3, that's the one that I currently just, just now did. And in it, um, the changes that are made here, I only added uh, a few words in a paragraph. Um, these are things that um, can actively be already commented on. So, So basically, anybody who has an, an, an opinion to the content of these, these pull requests, the content of the, of the version, can immediately um, give some, some feedback. And that's what we are like, you know, what we would like to do during these, these phases that we call the, the, the drafting phase. And in that sense, um, it, the, the, the request for comments documents can actively be uh, a community created document in that sense. And that's what, what we um, need different contributors for, because as you see, on the one hand, we need persons, of course, um, to be able to write um, RFCs from, from a technical point of view, from the, yeah, from the point of view of experts on specific facets of the time machine, like semantic web, like graph technologies and so on. But at the same time, we need persons with interest in the topic to, to actively comment on that, to actively maybe suggest some, change, some changes. Um, and we need people um, that have some time on their hand um, and some, some, some knowledge of um, GitHub, of, of this kind of source code management system to be able to manage the community interactions. And then we need people um, to actively review these, these final documents in a more thorough manner um, so they can, can be published um, peer-reviewed documents in the end. 
And so that's that's the, the, the three different steps and the most involved ones will be the ones that are actively working on the, the drafting stage of these documents on um, yeah, on GitHub and on these, these markdown documents. And yeah, so there probably are some questions about that right now. <laughs> Sorry about this short excursion in my uh, computer <laughs> before, but um, yeah. So we're not demonstrating open review. I mean, the, I mean for those who I think who are who are looking, I think it's it's. I, mean, I guess the population is divided into several. Those who think who understand what Daniel is doing, and say, yeah, that's the, probably the way of doing. And these are the people we want to recruit in the editorial team to help actually managing. I mean, this very careful drafting of the of the RFC. I mean, you must understand that these are a bit like code low. So we need, I mean, something which is a tile like this, which is not like a Google Doc. Which is uh, which is done by a group of people. I mean, people can work like that on the drafting phase. I mean, in the drafting phase, you can use any tool you want, uh, working with three, four people. But of course, we're changing scale uh, as soon as we're entering on the on the publication on GitHub, and we are dealing with a hundred person, two hundred person, three hundred person. That's why, like with big big software code, we're changing type of tools at that level, which needs much more. Uh, careful uh, annotation and, and, and elements. Uh, and so if you feel you would like to join us on this, don't hesitate, send us, send us a mail. Uh, if uh, you feel uh, you would like to, to, be, uh, to, to, to review the thing, but not at the level of GitHub, you can be a reviewer, which will be in a much more traditional manner using the open review platform, uh, where you receive the PDF version uh, of the uh, of the RFC and you can edit it. I mean, something that Daniel has not shown is that there's a fully automatic process which is creating the PDF documents uh, as soon as a modification is done, which permits them to connect with a community of people which is not using GitHub or whatever, uh, but is, is able to read a, a PDF document and say this, has, this is a nonsense because it will not work for this and that reason. So we tried really to keep uh, let's say both, I would say highly uh, uh, tailored, the uh, close to code uh, aspect uh, linked uh, with, uh, with that aspect and, and then joining uh, after that with the, uh, with the platform. So here you see, of course, the RFC, uh, the RFC platform, they're there. Uh, this, is, this is alternately produced automatically by the document system. And this is typically what the reviewers in the open review will, will review as a whole. And, and based on the reviewer's comment, then the process actually for the authors is restarting on that basis, making some integration at a fine grain level. So it's not a very rapid process. I think you understood. Uh, it's, a, it's a slowly like, like, like the low uh, system process, but all the drafts are seenable since, since the first moment. So that means that you don't have to wait for an RFC to be, uh, to be actually um, uh, accepted to, uh, to, to act. Any question? So the, these corrections are both contents and grammar and the, how do you call it, to have the right words, it's both. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what we actually probably will need are, are, thing, so are people that can do more like editorial work, like in a scientific paper in a sense, helping contributors um, writing and correcting language mistakes, of course, but at the same time, we also need um, scientific feedback um, on, on all aspects of the, of the respective RFCs, of course, because most of them will be very in-depth on, on specific topics and somebody that is able to correct language mistakes probably is not necessarily able to, to give some feedback on, on whatever the RFC is actually about. Jochen, do you want to present yourself? So you 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 were yes. you sent us a mail uh, before, and but 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 as you yeah. just said, maybe maybe a couple of words. Yeah, exactly. Um, originally, I'm a biochemist, did a master of chemistry, and then took a lot of time to go go. I think in the near of time machine because I did a PhD finally in neuronal aesthetics in medical history with a guy who tried like you to bring together neurohistory from 17th century up to the future to develop out of history new types of um, medical diagnosis. He failed, he didn't get money, but so I got this idea. 
Um, and now since years I try to um, advance this uh, theoretical medicine into the modern medical world. And right now I try to do a postdoc at a hospital in Berlin who do integrative medicine. And my idea is to expand this integrative medicine with art theory and art therapy images. No, I want to use images to improve the diagnostics. And uh, as my PhD was about images in medical history, for me, time machine is so interesting that you use also no, the history of cultural understanding, of scientific understanding. So um, that's why I like um, an European platform on high level. And of course, my dream would be um, to connect a little bit this resource. I have a network from a project in Saxonia who tried to develop a museum of healing cultures of the world, which doesn't exist yet. They are now fighting in a regional area, um, Saxonia, Czech Republic, to have a touristic and healing new area, regional thing. So um, there's a nice network and um, yeah, I hope this networks will fuse with time machine so that in the future, um, education, medicine, uh, tourism, well, these are three big aspects which this um, network offers um, that this could come together. That's a bit my motivation and I think it doesn't yet still is it's not yet connected because they are still fighting for making it real. They have to reconstruct houses, they have to, to build some new houses there in Saxonia. But my vision is um, that such a research platform could be a good basis to come together. That's my motivation. Thank you. Thank you, Jochen. So, so in, in, in what we are trying to uh, to integrate is all all solutions. I mean, to quite de we're defining problems and we're defining solutions. So that that's that's uh, essentially the process of the time machine. It's a, it's a process solving uh, uh, process solving. Uh, any additional thanks, uh, Jochen? Any additional um, person that would like to uh, to join on some aspects, or if you have questions on the process, so you can start right away going to to GitHub, seeing the ongoing uh, the ongoing uh, elements, and uh, uh, and you uh, you can comment, you can do mm -hmm. pull request, uh, and but if you want to participate to the redaction of one of the RFC, which is currently um, listed in the RFC 2, uh, the one for the RFC 3, uh, please uh, send us a mail to rfc.timemachine.eu so that we're creating these working groups in that respect. And if you think uh, there's something important which is currently not in the RFC, which is very likely, I mean, as Jim mentioned uh, earlier on, I mean, something on citizen scientists or something on ground truth and these are elements which are not identified and which deserve to be identified but well, same thing we will we will coordinate that a bit so that uh, so that there's a, there's no uh, effort mm -hmm. which is which is lost but, but by the way as far as i see these resources which are mentioned from lausanne they are not yet part of the project uh, i think they are a part or are they in a way connected which i don't know these resources which art lab use and they're uh, not in play now are they uh, so here, here, I mean, it's really about building the time machine. I mean, there's, there's, there's it's, it's quite big. There's 600 institutions, so, mm -hmm. so which are, which are contributing, and we're trying to, uh, let's say, beyond each of the single projects, uh, yeah. finding ways of, of uh, deciding on, on common ways of solving things. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any additional questions? If uh, if not, I think we can close it uh, close it here. Uh, I invite you tomorrow for the next two sessions: one at 10 uh, a.m. on local time machine, and one at 2 p.m. Uh, on the uh, uh, scouting on the project scouting. So in the local time machine session, you're going to learn concretely if you have a project which is dealing with a particular territory, then how can you uh, integrate it in a local time machine? Or on the contrary, if you've been coordinating quite a series of projects, how to enter all these series of projects inside the inside the website. Uh, we'll have a part which is also uh, hands-on. I mean, although we are at the beginning, of course, of this uh, of this process of deploying the new website, but but it's an exciting time. And uh, on the afternoon, we'll see. I mean, if you have an idea of project and you would like to be funded, uh, then uh, you can actually benefit from the project scouting uh, services, which are uh, first uh, helping people uh, to uh, 
framing their project in the context of the time machine, getting in contact with uh, potentially other partners uh, and uh, having some uh, support on the way actually some particular a funding scheme could be applicable in that in that respect. So as uh, we said this morning on the General Assembly, there's going to be a tsunami really of funding uh, schemes based on the uh, next generation EU uh, uh, funding on the topics of the time machine. We would really love that it's not resulting in a multitude of small projects which are reinventing the wheels altogether. We'd like really to, to, to help mediate a bit the, some of these projects so that not only I mean, they have more chance of getting funding, but we have more chance at a higher level to actually uh, construct and benefit from their research uh, while keeping in mind, I mean, the longer terms of things we have to solve, which is what we've been discussing today in the RSCs. If there's no other questions, I suppose we, we can close here. Uh, thanks to all of you and, uh, and see you tomorrow for the next, uh, for the, the, the next sessions. Bye-bye to you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.